Miss Young with Mother Time and today we're going to have some fun making busted canvases. I'm not going to make just one. I am making three for fall, Halloween, and Christmas. Let me know in the comments, have you made a busted canvas? Have you seen the busted canvases? If you haven't seen them, wait until you see. They are so fun to make and perfect for a craft night too. And the possibilities are endless. And the best part is I have free printables to go along with them too. So I'm going to show you from start to finish how to make them. They're so fun, they're so easy, and like I said, the possibilities are endless. So I'm so excited to get started. So grab yourself a yummy hot coffee, tea, or whatever beverage you like, sit back, relax, and let's get started. Like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be making three of the stretch canvases, one for Christmas, one for Halloween, and one for fall. First, you're gonna need your canvas. I'm working with eight by 10 canvases. You're gonna need a stretched canvas, you can get these right at Dollar Tree. This is what it looks like. So you need one of these. And then you're gonna need one of the artist canvases. It's just like a board. And that is what I'm going to attach to the back. And this is where we're going to attach the picture. So speaking of picture, you're gonna need an image to attach to the artist canvas. You can use an old greeting card. You can find one online or you can use these darling ones that you can download for free on my blog and I'll include a link for them in the description below. So look at how cute this one is for Halloween. I love the haunted house and the cute little bats and the pumpkins. And this is what you're gonna kind of see a little glimpse of once I bust that canvas out. And then here is the one for Christmas that I absolutely love. It is like looking through a window. There's something so nostalgic about a Christmas village. And I just think this is the perfect image to use for a busted canvas. And here is the image for fall. So again, you can download all three of these on my blog for free. I'll include a link for them in the description below. And what's nice about these is these are eight by 10. So I'm just going to be attaching them directly onto these boards once I cut them down. Now, if you are using a card or a different image that is not an eight by 10, you're gonna want some scrapbook paper to attach to this because, and then add your card on there, just so when the canvas busts out, you're not going to see the white canvas if any of that is showing through. So, but if you're using an eight by 10 image, you're just gonna be attaching that right to the artist canvas. Speaking of scrapbook paper, you're gonna want some scrapbook paper for these, you're only gonna need two of them. So for the Halloween one, this is what's going to be on the front. I love like that chalkboard look. And that is what's going to be going on the top of the canvas. And then what's gonna be busting out when you see the image is of course a little bit of buffalo check. Cause who doesn't love buffalo check? I love buffalo check, especially for Halloween. It's so, it's so Halloween-y. So that is for Halloween. All the scrapbook paper is from Hobby Lobby. And then for the fall, what is going on top is this burlap. I love that, don't you? And then what is busting out is this pretty fall plaid. And then for Christmas, I'm gonna be doing that burlap again. And then what is busting out, kind of undecided. It's gonna be a last minute decision. I, I'm leaning to this one. This is the original plan. Uh, just that green, I think it's just so pretty with this but I love tartan for Christmas, I do. So my tartan loving heart is kind of wanting to do this one, but I'm leaning more towards the green one, but who knows, maybe a last minute decision there. So I kind of like to lay everything out. This is a fantastic idea. If you are doing a craft night, whether it's a fall craft night, Christmas craft night, to have all of these supplies, again, grabbing your images, whether you use these your cards, other images that you find online, your stretched canvas, as well as your artist canvas. So two boards, and that's all your, pretty much your basic supplies that you're going to need to make them, whether you're gonna be making all of these or just picking out one to do, maybe you're just doing a Christmas one. You're also gonna need Mod Podge. Now, if you are having a craft night, you can get the smaller little bottles at Dollar Tree and then have them at each of the settings too. Or if you just need a little bit of Mod Podge, you can get that at Dollar Tree or you can just you know use these. But um, just a little idea, you could have a couple of these and on the table too, depending on how many people you're having at the craft night. But if you wanna have everybody have their all their own supplies, get the little bottles at Dollar Tree. 
I'm using the Matte Mod Podge. You're also gonna need a dryer, whether you're using a hair dryer or a heat gun. This is to dry the Mod Podge, and I'll show you why I'm gonna be doing that. You're also gonna need parchment paper. The parchment paper is to attach the scrapbook paper or the image to the canvas and make it nice and smooth. So what I like to do is I'm going to apply a coat of Mod Podge to the canvas, then dry it. That's what the dryer is for. Then I'm going to put my scrapbook paper or my image down, put the parchment paper on top, and then use an iron. So you're also gonna need an iron and put that on top. And that adheres it to the Mod Podge but makes it nice and smooth. So no more wrinkles. So if you always are fighting with wrinkles when you use Mod Podge, use this technique. It is a lifesaver. I love doing that. It makes it nice and smooth on the project too. Since I'm working on several projects, I like to do an assembly line opposed to just doing one project at a time. So first I'm going to attach all of the images to the artist canvas, and then I'm going to just take it each step, but do all the steps at the same time and then attach them all together too. It just kind of makes the process go a little bit smoother instead of doing it once and then doing it again and then doing it a third time. Since I'm already attaching the prints, I might as well do it times three and so on and so forth. So if you're just doing one, you'll just kind of just go right on to the next step, but I'll kind of show you also how I do the assembly line. So if you want to make a several at the same time, this just makes the process a little easier instead of just stopping and starting all over again. I like to print the images on watercolor paper Paper. It just gives it a really nice texture to it, or you can just use cardstock. I recommend at least using some cardstock, a little bit of a heavier paper than just regular copy paper. This is the watercolor paper that I'm using. It is from Hobby Lobby and it is a nine by 12. My printer is eight and a half by 11. So I just simply cut the paper down and then print the image out, but I'll still need to cut it down to the eight by 10. So that's pretty much it to start working on the busted canvases. So let's get started. So like I mentioned first, I'm gonna attach the images to this artist canvas. It's an eight by 10 too, again, from Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to remove the packaging and then we're gonna trim these images down to fit on top of here. I have my canvas ready to go. So next I'm going to trim these images down because they are on eight and a half by 11 paper right now. And I need to trim them to an eight by 10 so they fit perfectly on top of the canvas. And what I like to do, you can use scissors. You can even use a rotary cutter and then just cut it out too. But I have this paper cutter that I've had for years that I'm just going to easily trim the image down to an eight by 10. So I have all of my images cut down, but when I went to print these, I forgot to hit actual size. So they would print them eight by 10. Instead, my printer shrunk them a little bit. No big deal. I'm not going to waste the ink and reprint these just so they're an eight by 10. These are just going to come in a little bit shorter. So I kind of was like, I'm just going to show you this in case you do the same thing. It's just going to be a little bit shorter. But again, you're not going to see this edge because it's a very small edge. So no, if you want it to fit the eight by 10, make sure you click actual on your printer. I was just printing these off and <laughs> forgot to do that. Um, but again, I don't want to waste the ink just to print them to be an eight by 10 because this is going to work out just fine. So I just wanted to show you that in case you forget, you can still work with that. It's just going to have that little edge, but you're not even going to notice that anyways. Next, I have my artist canvas laid out since I'm doing three, I'm going to knock those all out at the same time. Again, this is the artist canvas. It's just the board. And I'm going to add a coat of Mod Podge to the top. Doesn't have to be heavy, just a coat on each of them. And then I'm going to dry them.
Okay, so the canvases are dry with that coat of Mod Podge. Now I'm going to bring in the images and I'm going to put work one at a time with these. So I'm going to put my image on top, move these aside, and just do one at a time here. Then I'm going to grab my parchment paper. And again, if this was, if I printed it without shrinking the image, it would just fit right on top, but no big deal. Now I'm going to put my parchment paper on top and then I'm going to bring in my iron. I'm just going to go over it and that melts the glue or the Mod Podge and the image sticks. Wait till you see. Okay, this one should be all set. Let's take a look. Perfect. On there, nice and smooth, no Mod Podge wrinkles. I love it. So that one is attached. Let me do the other two. I absolutely love this Christmas image. As I'm like looking at it, oh, it is so, pretty. So this one is all done too. Let's take a look, make sure it's all in there nice. Yep, perfect. No wrinkles, attached. Now I'm going to do the fall one. All right, that looks great. I'm going to set that aside. Again, that's on there too. Nice and smooth and no Mod Podge wrinkles. Here are the three images attached to the canvas. Again, if I printed it right, it would be on there all the way. But again, I wasn't going to waste ink when you're not even going to see that anyway. So, and I wasn't even going to attach scrapbook paper. Now, if it was a little bit smaller, you want to attach some scrapbook paper first and then the image like a card. If you're using like a card, just so when you do bust the canvas, you're not gonna see any of the canvas. So, but this was just a little bit, we're talking probably quarter, half inch around, so I wasn't worried about that. But also too, in case you do the same thing I do. So let me set these aside and we're gonna work on this stretched canvas. Next onto the stretched canvas. Again, the canvas I'm using is from Dollar Tree. It is their stretch canvas eight by 10 in their crafter square section. So I have three of them because I'm making three. I'm going to begin by working on the back. This is the part that's actually going to bust through. So I'm going to do again, same thing as before, creating my assembly line. I have my three different scrapbook papers. Now, obviously these are bigger than my canvas. so I'm going to need to cut these down. Again, I like to eyeball things or you can be precise and, you know, just draw a line, but I just tend to eyeball <laughs> what I'm cutting. So, I just put a little slit of where I need to trim this down. And I'm gonna use my little slicer again to slice my scrap of paper. Make sure it'll fit in there good. So you want it to fit in there just like that. So now I need to trim this side. And I just like to make a little slit. Save this for another project. Find my little slit, there it is. There we go, now that should fit in there perfectly. Perfect, so that's gonna fit in there. Then I'm gonna trim my other two pieces first. I'm gonna take that out because I'm actually going to need to add a coat of Mod Podge to that. So I'm gonna set that aside and then trim my other two pieces of scrapbook paper. So now I'm gonna have my assembly line again. I'm going to add a coat of Mod Podge to the back of the canvas. So there's the front to the back of it. I like to, when I'm in between, just put my brush in a baggie or wrap it with a little saran wrap, just so it doesn't harden. 
And then the same thing like before, I'm going to let it dry too and then add that scrap of paper to the back of this. I'm just going to add the coat to each of these and let them dry. Okay, these are all dry. So next, I'm going to attach these. Same thing like I did with the images. I'm gonna place my scrapbook paper down. Then I'm gonna grab my parchment paper, place it on top, grab my iron, and place that, and let that Glue the Mod Pod, get all sticky. All right, this one looks looks good. Take a peek nice and smooth so i'm going to set this one aside and attach the other two here are the backs now i'm going to flip them over apply coat of mod pod to the top and drive those So these seem pretty dry. So I'm gonna start with this one first. This is the fall one. I'm using this burlap looking scrapbook paper and I'm just gonna attach it first. Then I'll trim off the edges because I've noticed that these canvases are not exactly eight by 10. They're a little crooked. So I figured I'm gonna attach it first so it's nice and smooth. Then I'll just trim off the edges. So I'm gonna just do that. Put it on there, make sure it's on there. Then I'm grabbing my parchment paper, just like I've been doing. Place that on top and get my iron and iron it on top. Okay, so this one is all attached just like that. And then I'm just gonna trim off this excess, but first I'm going to attach the other two. And now I'm gonna trim the excess off. So I'm just gonna go in with my rotary cutter and trim off that excess scrapbook paper around the edges. So I trim off that excess and then what I like to do when I flip it over is I'm going to go around it again and also get the edges just so it's on there nice and secure, especially since I trim the edges. So I'm going to also take the edge, go around, make sure it's on there nice and smooth. So the next step is to create the busted canvas. So I have my picture on this canvas and then I have my canvas and they're going to be eventually attached together. But first I'm going to do the busted canvas. So what I want to do is see where I want to bust it out. And I really want to bust it kind of like right in the center so you get a glimpse of the, but I also want to see the pumpkins too. So you can really bust it wherever you want. 
you can go a little bit aim a little bit higher I am going to go just a smidge above center just so I see that all not right in the center so I'm gonna go like right here and I'm just gonna make a hole and bust through my canvas just like that to create my hole now you can do this with scissors and just cutting out slits or you can do the rotary cutter just to make my slits. So I'm just gonna turn it over and start making slits, kinda like this, almost like cutting a pizza. So here are my slits that I've busted through. You can see that I've busted through right there. You can kind of get a little peek at how it's gonna look. Oh, it's gonna look so cute. So now this is where you're gonna want the hot glue. I'm gonna carefully roll it up and attach a little bit of hot glue and then roll it and let it stick so it's like a little roll. Hold that down so it sticks. So here is how this busted canvas looks. I am dying to see how it looks with the picture behind it. So let's take a look. Oh my gosh. How cute, you guys. How cute. I absolutely love it. It's like you're looking in a window and you're seeing this cute little barn. Is that not the cutest? Oh, it's such a fun project to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach this to the back of this, and then I'm gonna do the other two, and then we're going to take care of the edges, and then if you wanna add any embellishments, I like to keep things simple. But uh, let's get this attached to the back. So I'm just going to simply add some hot glue around the edge, like so. And then take the canvas and attach it. Look how stinking cute those turned out. Don't you love it? And that's why you really want the image to go down too. So if you're looking at it and you even look down at it, you can still see the image. So it's like looking through a window. So cute, I love it. But I'm gonna take some ribbon, do something to kind of make the edges all neat. Add a few little accents, not a lot. I like it, the simplicity, and I really want this to stand out. But I have two more to do, so let me get working on those. So with the Christmas one, I want it more right in the center, just so when I bust the canvas, you see this beautiful village. So I'm gonna go right about center, just to see that entire village. So right there, poke my hole. So it's through to the other side. Move this aside. And then again, you can use the rotary cutter to cut your slits. Or you can even go in with some scissors too. And I wanted to show you how easy it is to cut with scissors. So if you don't have rotary cutters, you don't need to invest in those to do this. 
I mean, they're good to have on hand for crafting projects, like when I was trimming the edges and stuff, but not necessary. So just go around, make some random slits. I like doing a variety of different sizes too, so it looks like it's busted. It's not perfect. And I'll do one more right there. And now it's time to bust through. I'm just gonna take a quick little peek. It is so cute. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing like I did before. I'm gonna go around and just do a little twirl gently and then take some hot glue and attach it to the back. So here's this one. Are you ready to take a look to see how it looks with the Christmas image? Let's see. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at how pretty. So happy as much as I love the tartan that I went with the green. Really picks up the trees and the little pops of green in the image. It is just so pretty. I feel like I'm peeking in in this quaint little Christmas village. It turned out so cute. So now let me attach it. So again, just gonna flip it over, attach hot glue around, and then pop this on. And here is the Christmas busted canvas. So cute. So last but not least, the Halloween canvas, same as before. I'm gonna put them together. And I think I'm gonna go just a little high just so I get the top of that. So I'm going to put it right here, find my center, just go a little above center, poke my hole. Here's the Halloween busted canvas. Let's see how it looks with the haunted house. So cute. And then when you peek down, you can see the little pumpkins. So again, it's like looking through a window. So again, I'm gonna attach the canvas to the back. So here is the haunted house. I love this chalkboard background. So cute and I love the buffalo check popping out. And then here's the first one I did, the fall barn. And then the Christmas one. The Christmas one. Let me know in the comments what your favorite one is, but we are not done yet. So now I'm going to take some ribbon and go around the edges just so it kind of just finishes them off. This is, you don't have to do this. You know, if you're going to have this on a plate stand, you might not see it um, that much, but just to kind of finish off the edges, I'm just going to go around with some ribbon. I was thinking of using this ribbon for the Christmas one, but look at how this buffalo chuck looks. I kind of like the buffalo chuck with the Christmas one, don't you? I think I'm gonna do the buffalo chuck one. Here it is with that buffalo chuck border. I love how pretty that is. I was gonna go with the other one, but I really, really like this one with that. Oh, it is so pretty. So now let me finish off the other ones. Now for the fun part, adding the accents and embellishments. So I was playing around a little bit before I kind of really decided. So I made a little raffia bow. Again, I like to kind of keep things simple. I just took some little picks off of this pinweed, which I love. Um, if it's available, I'll link it in the description. I love it. It comes in a yellow too, but I like that orange. So I think I'm going to just 
do a little dab up here and add some of that. Now I'll add my little bow, kind of tuck that in there too. A couple more of these little picks in here too, just to tuck in. That's how it's looking so far. I was debating about adding a button, but I kind of didn't want to, but I know I love to add buttons on a lot of my craft projects, but for some reason I was trying to not do button, but I just, I love the simplicity of that. And I talked a little bit of the raffia into just because fall and raffia seem to go together, right? I had these little leaves, which I was thinking maybe adding just one or two, tucking them into, then maybe even down below, kind of, oh, I kind of like that. Maybe just a couple look like they're falling out of the picture. Oh, that's pretty, just like that. There we go. Do I want to do two or three? I wish I had one more like that yellow. I like that yellow. And these little leaves are just from Hobby Lobby. Come in a little pack in the fall section. I like just a couple like that. And I'm tucking some of the raffia underneath this part two, just so it looks like it's all falling through. That is so, so pretty. And I love the burlap scrapbook paper too. I'm unsure about this. I kind of like it. I'm kind of like, is it too much? But I'm going to show you just to give you some inspo too. Um, these are the little clip-on pumpkins from Dollar Tree. They come in a little three pack. So I just clip them here. And that's the beauty is if you decide not to, there's no commitment. What do you think? Do you like it with the pumpkins or not? I don't know if it's too much, but on the other hand, I kind of like it. So let's see before. I love the simplicity. I usually go less is more. And then just adding maybe just one. Right there would just be the one. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking less is more, but I do like the two too. But that's the beauty again of using the clip-ons. You can always clip them on, clip them off if you want, but just because I love the picture and I don't want to take away from that, that's the focal point, the pumpkins are down there. And I'm afraid if I attach those, you're not gonna see those. I want this to be like a little window into this beautiful little country barn. Um, so I just think that simplicity with that is just, is just enough, especially when I put this on a little stand, it's just going to, you know, be so pretty. So that I think I'm gonna keep as the fall one. Again, just some raffia some of this beautiful orange pinweed, these little leaves, which are from Hobby Lobby, um, created this beautiful busted canvas. For the Christmas one, I'm gonna start with some of the snow tech, which is just great. It gives a really nice snowy look. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit around. This brush may be too big, but let's just see. Just to kind of bring that snowy look, it's gonna kind of just dab it around. So I went a little overboard on the snow tech, but I kind of like it. I wanted to bring just that snowy look out too. And when it dries, it'll be nice and hard too. So I decided I'm gonna keep with the buffalo check, do a little bow. Then I have some little picks. I'm seeing if I wanna add that in there too, just for that little pop of green. 
So I'll add that first. It's a snowy winter wonderland, even adding it to some of the greenery. All right, and here is a look at the Christmas Village Busted Canvas. So for the Halloween one, I think I'm gonna continue working with these orange stems, but I'm not gonna add anything up on top. Plus, my Busted Canvas is higher up too than on the other ones. So I think I'm just gonna work on the bottom half just to switch it up a little bit too. So I'm going to play with these orange stems, kind of arrange them first, see if I like it before I commit. So this is what it looks like with those orange wispies coming down right now. I like that. I like that just down there. Let me see if I add a couple more. I think I'm going to use some more raffia again. Fall, Halloween, Raffia, it all kind of goes together, right? So I just kind of glue a little bit to the tops there. This glue's really stringy. <laughs> We're going to make it work. Tuck it in. This is coming along so cute. I love the Raffia and these orange picks, just pulling from that. If they're still available, I will link them in the description below. If they're not available, Michaels has similar ones. Um, not quite, but you know, kind of. So um, I just love how that's all coming along. So I just kind of add a little dab of glue, slide it in there, and adding some of the raffia. So I just take a little bundle of it, bundle it together, and then I just use a little just using a pencil right now. A little skewer would work just to kind of pop it in. And for the final accents, I just made this little bow, simple bow with this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to attach it here. Then I'm gonna use a couple more of these leaves that I used on the fall one. Kind of just randomly attach them here. And here is the Halloween Busted Canvas. I love it. Again, you could even add one of the pumpkins too. I was debating about that here again too, but I just really don't want to take away from the picture because if you look right in, you can even see the pumpkins too. And I really want that to be the, the focal point. And then this just being the accent around the picture. But I just, I love this one too. So here is the Halloween one, the fall one, how cute, but the snowy Christmas village. Let me know in the comments what your favorite one is. I just love this snowy village and I love the snow tech. It just gives a really nice snowy look to any of your winter holiday craft projects. And this fall one is just so pretty. And again, little pumpkin, but my thought is when you put it on a plate stand, then have some pumpkins around it. So this really is the focal point. Love the fall. And I love this burlap scrapbook paper too. And then Halloween. That's so cute. I cannot wait to make these into next year for all the different seasons. Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, 4th of July. These are so fun to make. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. If you make one too, I'd love to see. Make sure you snap a picture and uh, send me a picture or you can tag me over on Instagram or Facebook so I can see it. I would love to see your busted canvas print too.
Okay guys, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some inspo to make these as well. Give this video a big thumbs up if you did and let me know in the comments what one is your favorite. Let me show them to you again. So here is the fall busted canvas. I just love this with the raffia and then these little berries and then the little leaves falling but I just love that picture too. And like I said, you can see down, you can see the little pumpkin. So if you look right in, you're not seeing it cut off. You can look right down and still see the image. So it's like you're looking through a window. And I love the plaid with this burlap um, scrapbook paper. It's just so pretty. And again, I love the simplicity. I don't like to overdo because I really don't want to take away from this beautiful picture that's inside this busted canvas so this is the fall one and then next is the halloween isn't it spectacular? i love this haunted house how cute it is and then again if you look down you're going to see the little pumpkins but it's not cut off so it looks like it's just you're looking through a window i just love it but then i love again the simplicity i love the contrasting bow a little bit of raffia that orange pinweed too it's simple and I love the buffalo check. So again, I didn't want it to do too much, but then this one goes up higher. So I like everything kind of down right in here too. The simplicity of it, not overdoing it. So it really shows this really cute picture. And then finally the Christmas one, which is still drying a little bit, but I love that snow tech because it really gives it additional texture. So when it dries, it's nice and hard. It's actually pretty dry right now, but it's getting there. Um, but I love bringing that out. Again, that wasn't initially what I was going to do. I was just going to dab some of it on the busted canvas, but then I'm like, I'm just going to do it all over and just make this a really snowy wonderland. And I love this like on the plate stand and then having additional greenery around it. And it really is a really pretty focal point. But that picture is just, I just could stare at that all day. And then if you look down, you still see the village. It's not cut off. So that's the beauty of using these larger images um, like this. And then I love the buffalo check side. Added just a little simple buffalo check bow. And I love the little cedar picks from Hobby Lobby in there. But again, I love that snowiness. And I love that I added the snowiness throughout the print. So just kind of bring the outdoors over here too, so to speak, right? Um, it's just so pretty so again let me know in the comments if you had to pick one which one is your favorite i really love the way all three of them turned out if i had to pick one oh i love the christmas one i love the i love them all but if i had to pick one i don't know i'm kind of really drawn to this one i really love the way this turned out but i love them all i can't choose one i can't so let me know if you have a favorite or if you just like them all. Um, these were so fun to make. And again, you can grab the free printables on my blog. I'll include a link in the description below. So you can grab those printables and like in the video, you can either just print them off or if you hit the actual size, they'll print as an eight by 10. I used the watercolor paper, but if you just have cardstock, you can just use that too. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you're gonna make these too. Again, if you do, uh, snap a picture and tag me. I would love to see it as well. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Mother Time. You can check out my blog, mothertime.com. And if you've enjoyed this video and you are not subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a video okay you guys this was so much fun i absolutely had so much fun making these and doing my little assembly line there are more to come because these were so much fun so thanks again for hanging out with me here today and i will see you guys very soon in the next video bye guys